John Simpson, thanks ever so much for joining us. John, we're here to talk about the wonderful news that you've been awarded the testimonial year by Middlesex. Many congratulations. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, it's um, obviously something um, that's been overwhelming. I think like the support and, and, and love from all the Middlesex members and, uh, and family and friends is, um, yeah, it's, it's been incredible. Um, yeah, obviously something that I'd never really thought of, um, but obviously, you know, when you have 15 years, you sort of think at some point it, might, it may, may happen. But uh, yeah, obviously something I'm excited about and hopefully um, yeah, 2023 can be a successful year both on and off the field. Absolutely. It's been a long journey to get here, John. You obviously born and, born and bred in Lancashire, uh, first played for Lancashire as a youngster for their twos, then down to Nottinghamshire for their twos. Then you joined Middlesex in 2008. What was it initially that prompted the move back then? Uh, yeah, obviously started out all my career at Lancashire, uh, you know, straight out of high school into a uh, professional sort of junior contract there. Um, things just never really materialised, obviously. Um, you know, as a keeper, there's only one spot. And, um, you know, at the time, sort of Luke Sutton signed um, from, from Derbyshire at Lancashire and, and Gareth Cross was in the second team. Um, so I was sort of just playing as a batter in and out. Um, so obviously that limited my opportunities. Um, and then obviously you get the news that they're obviously not, not going to sign you um, and obviously went down to Notts and had a pretty pretty good um, five or six games down there but sadly that never materialised uh, and then uh, a chance phone call from uh, from my dad to Clive Radley uh, on, on the Young Cricketers uh, and Rad made an exception and I guess sort of the rest is history really um, you know since signed in 2008 um, as I said I don't think I'd sort of Envisaged still being here, um, you know, a sprightly 34 year old. Um, but yeah, it's been an incredible journey. Obviously, one that I'm extremely proud of. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of bumps and hurdles over the years. But um, yeah, it's, it's been one that I've been, uh, you know, incredibly excited um, for. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been an incredible journey so far. I guess those early career knocks are what help shape you as a cricketer. You need to overcome advers adversity from time to time. Um, Eventually landed here, as we say, in 2008, your debut in 2009. Tell us about that. What memories do you have of that debut? How proud were you at the time to make your debut for the club? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, sort of when I signed in 2008, I think that was sort of June time. So I actually signed at the same time as Sam Robson and, and, and Adam London. Um, you know, and obviously Richard Scott was, um, I think, assistant coach at the time and Toby was head coach. So, um, yeah, um, obviously you know, performing well in the second team was, you know, first priority and um, obviously got to meet the greats and goods of, uh, of, of the guys who are in the second team, like Danny Evans and, and David Nash, for example, uh, you know, but then you had the senior heads of sort of Chris Silverwood and, and Alan Richardson, um, you know, you could sort of uh, bounce off, um, you know, and they've obviously played a, a huge part in my career. Um, and then obviously, I think late, I think it was latter in 2009, I think I made my 50 over debut here, I think, was it against Derbyshire or maybe Leicestershire, I think, anyway, um, I should really remember, which is pretty <laughs> bad for me, um, but yeah, I mean, at the time, I was just playing, I got picked as a batter, uh, I think Ben Scott was keeping wickets, so was grazing somewhere in the, uh, in the outfield out towards the mound stand, uh, which was interesting, but um, something that, you know, as a young kid, you sort of just kind of get on with it, um, you know, because I guess you just want to be playing um, and then obviously made my championship debut so, uh, l later on in that year and um, you know and finished the season um, but yeah it's uh, yeah it's been as you say we've been a lot of incredible moments some not so inc um, incredible moments either um, some, um, yeah it's, it's it's been a, like I said it's been an incredible journey one I'm obviously extremely proud of and uh, but yeah um, you know I'm excited for you know the next couple of years however long I've still got left in my playing career. Good to hear. Well, you didn't take long to make your mark in the championship. You say you made your debut at the end of nine. Uh, 2010 was your first 100. Uh, I think I might say, was it against North Ants? Yeah, I think I got, uh, did I get 87 not out? I think on debut at Wanted you Road. Um, and then, yeah, obviously nice to go back to Wanted Road and, and get 100 there. My memories are sketchy of that first 100, even though I was there watching. Uh, I, was, I was in I the stands was. watching, having a couple of beers. I can't quite remember it. Tell us about that special day, John, getting your first 100 for the club. Yeah, I think and the you know, ironic thing is, is obviously you got Finney's testimonial e evening um, tonight, and he was actually at the other end when I, when I got it. So, you know, he's somebody who um, you know, I've, I've known since we were probably sort of 14, 15, and um, you know, for him to be at the other end is, um, you know, is an incredibly special moment. And, um, yeah, I, you know, it was obviously a pretty good bowl in the time. I think uh, at the time, I think the overseas was 
I think they had Andrew Hall, Johan van der Vaff, yeah. Nicky Boyer, Monty Panasar. I think maybe Lee Daggett, who actually grew up in the same town as me and played for the same cricket club as we grew up. Um, obviously, albeit is a few years older than me, Lee. Um, so yeah, it's obviously very special, and um, you know it's always nice to sort of as a young kid coming into the, you know that changing room at the time um, to sort of show that I could play. Uh, I think that's one of the big things. Um, you sort of learn with all the knocks you get is when you get that opportunity and I think that's something that my old man sort of drummed into me you've, you've got to take it with both hands and um, you know without sort of trying to put too much pressure on yourself but um, but yeah obviously incredible moment um, but actually I can't remember whether we actually won or lost that game in the end but uh, but as I said yeah it was incredible uh, yeah really really special and obviously Richard Scott as coach as well I think neither I think it was a draw but, was it? Uh, no. as I say my memory's sketchy but uh uh, it's been a career packed full of highs, John. You, I mean, some that obviously stand out. Um, you and Bergie stood at the end at Grace Road in 2011. I think Bergie probably outshone you on the day there with his 646 to <laughs> earn us promotion back up into the top flight. What memories of that special day at Leicestershire? Uh, 11 years ago now. Yeah, I know, incredible times flown. Um, uh, yeah, look, I, I think, uh, you know, in the first innings, I think, you know, it's not often I give Mert too much credit with the bat, but, you know, he hung around there and I think, uh, I think he, he got a, a 40 or 50 to get us to, the, to um, you know, the bonus points we needed to get promoted. Um, and then obviously, um, yeah, that second innings was, um, yeah, incredible. It's obviously got off to a pretty shaky start chasing, you know, chasing a lowish total. Uh, and then obviously, you know, myself and, and Bergie managed to come together and sort of take that game forward. Uh, I guess it's the, um, you know, the, I'm trying to think of the, the, the word. It's that sort of the youthfulness, you know, there's no fear, is there? Um, from, from my side, it was just take the game on. I was, I was confident and, and obviously Bergie finished with a 6-4-6 uh, six, six and, and, and got a tattoo. But, um, you know, sadly... <laughs> Um, for anybody now, I, I, I didn't go down that route, but, uh, but yeah, obviously a special day, um, you know, to get promoted uh, from Division 2 to Division 1. Um, you know, we had a, an outstanding team, you know, obviously Straussy, Robson, Rogers, um, you know, JB Dalrymple came, came back and, and finished the end of that season. So, you know, and obviously an outstanding bowling attack. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was a, a great day and I know it was certainly a special evening as well. Good times for sure. As I say, John, plenty of eyes. I guess it's hard to look beyond Lords here. Back in 2016, when we won the county championship, that was a, an incredible game, uh, first and foremost, and an incredible day to end it all. Obviously, Toby took most of the plaudits with his hat trick. You played a huge part that season yourself. What memories of that year and, and talking good nights, I'm guessing that was a good one. Yeah, I think pulling pilot and pints in the tavern was probably my, the highlight of the whole day, actually. Um, but no, look, I, uh, you know, 2016 was, was special to, to win, you know, D Division 1. You know, that's the pinnacle of our game, um, our Cannes Championship. So, um, yeah, look, I, a lot of special moments throughout the season. Obviously, Somerset uh, on my birthday springs to mind uh, when most people were going home and, and, and ended up sort of pulling the cat out, cat out of the hat, really. Um, but yeah, I, th I think sort of, you know, we, we actually had a conversation halfway through the season because we find it actually very difficult to win games here, at, um, you know, and, and we had to look at how we could, um, you know, force wins. And, you know, we, we spoke about a few bits and pieces which, you know, came to fruition. But um, yeah, there are obviously moments, obviously the Taunton, um, you know, then we, I think we, we chased down 270 at, at Trent Bridge against Knotts. Obviously, uh, you know, draw against Lancashire, uh, and, and then it all came down to that uh, incredibly, um, you know, incredible last day here at, here at Lords, and um, you know, and I think the, the great thing about it was such a great advert for county cricket. Um, I think it was maybe ten, fifteen thousand people in, which was was special, um, you know, especially considering you'd probably get crowds of maybe one to two thousand in. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that whole sort of second innings and, and that sort of the hysteria behind behind the scenes. Um, you know, when we, when we were batting, um, you know, with, with, with Gailey coming into the changing room and having those conversations in the toilets was, was quite amusing and, and having to shut yourself off from, from the noise. Um, yeah, it was um, yeah, an incredible day. Uh, probably not my, my finest dismissal, um, getting out by Alex Lees <laughs> from a P-roller, but uh, these things happen. Um, at least I haven't sort of dwelled on that and uh, it hasn't ruined my career or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, obviously the celebrations were uh, incredible, I think. You know, this sort of just kind of shows what kind of team and, and, and club we are. Um, having all the uh, family, uh, coaching staff, all the members of staff up in the change room up here, 
and then obviously going down into the tavern uh, with all the members and, and, and celebrating properly um, like it should have been done. Good times. John, you've had a remarkable career here in Middlesex, 15 years. We're far from at the end of it here and now. Um, took you all the while until this year to have your best year with the bat. You've been consistently brilliant with the gloves all of those 15 years. I know you yourself have always felt you've got more runs in you. This year it really clicked. Broke a thousand runs for the first time. Uh, how was your year? What was the prep like and what clicked this year? Yeah, it's obviously, um, yeah, I've, I've always sort of maintained that I've probably never, um, you know, hit the heights of what I, what I could achieve with the bat. I always felt that I was better than what I was producing. Um, I probably had two or three years where I've scored late 800s, maybe even 900. Yep. Um, but yeah, to obviously go past a thousand runs this year was, was incredibly special and obviously a season that I'll look back on very proud. Um, you know, obviously the biggest thing for me was, was, was getting back in Division 1. Um, that's where we want to be, that's where the, the, cricket, you know, the, the best cricket is played and that's the standard we, you know, we, we hold ourselves to account. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, obviously next year is going to be, in, be incredibly special, as I said, both on and off the field. But um, yeah, it's, it's one that we're, we're all excited for and um, you know, obviously back training hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I look, look back at last season, obviously, um, you know, I sat down at the start of last season and, and, and looked more actually into my mental preparation more than anything of, you know, um, with what's actually going to get me in the best frame of mind to, to go out there and be sharp from ball one. Um, I felt at times that maybe, you know, I haven't been quite on it. Um, and, and obviously, I think, as everybody knows, I get a good 30 and 40 and, and find myself being out. So actually trying to be a bit more ruthless and um, consistent when, when I'm actually in and, and, and make hay. Um, you know, obviously it's, um, you know, paid off this year, but, you know, it's still obviously going to be a work in progress. But, um, you know, it's, it's quite nice at 34 that, you know, I've delved into actually a little bit more into actually the mental side of the game with a few little technical um, changes and, um, you know, they've seemed to have paid off. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been incredibly enjoyable. Um, you know, obviously the changing room has been fantastic. We obviously, um, you know, obviously new coach with Jono coming back in and, and, and Rory stepping up to assistant coach and obviously had Jade as, um, as, as bowling coach uh, for the season. But obviously he's jumped back across the river. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think the, the atmosphere that we've created, not only from the coaching staff, but also from the playing staff, has, has allowed guys to go out there and, and flourish. And um, you, know, you see that. You see the younger guys, you know, got a little bit more swagger about them now. And they actually believe that they're good enough to be playing at the highest standard and, and, and they're performing. Um, you know, and, and I think that's uh, an exciting thing for us moving forward as a group. Just expanding on that dressing room culture, John, you, you, you're in a group of teammates here that are all close friends as well as teammates. The camaraderie and the togetherness that you all display is evident for everyone to see. You must have had some phenomenal moments, not only in this very room here in the Lord's dressing room, but elsewhere. What's your funniest and, and most memorable moment from being within and around the lads, if you can keep it clean? <laughs> I'm just trying to think, to be honest, Fletch. I mean, you, you know, you think over 15 years, there'd actually be a lot, but... Um, Oh, look, I, I think 2016, I think actually, um, you know, that, that championship winning day and, and sort of the aftermath in the evening, you know, I had a very good friend of mine um, actually come down from Lancashire to, to watch the game um, with his son-in-law. Um, my dad was actually over at the same time, but he was actually attending a very good family friend's funeral up in, uh, up in Ramsbottom. So he was obviously watching it on the TV. Um, so like a special moments like that, but... I think just watching Gus and Gat do shoe bombs, I think, um, you know, Jaeger, Jaeger bomb, Jaegermeister and Red Bull out of, um, you know, I think it was Toby's bowling boot. I think that has to be one of the, the highlights of, 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 of the 15 year career journey. Um, yeah, I mean, there's loads of that, um, you know, even, you know, just sort of, I think, you know, international debut, just, you know, coming in here and sitting in the same spot. Um, you know, they're, they're real, real proud moments and, and, and obviously, I, I mean, there's been a lot of highlights, but I think, the, you know, the small ones are always the ones that you really keep close to you. Well, you've nicely predicted my next question, which was to talk about that moment away from Middlesex when you made your international debut, you obviously made it into the ODI squad against Pakistan, slightly beneficially, I guess, as a result of COVID. Um, but you grabbed the moment, you performed exceptionally well for three games against Pakistan including that game here. How special was it to have your, your performances acknowledged with a call up to England and to represent your country? Yeah, incredibly special. I think as a, a young kid, you always sort of, you know, dream of playing international cricket. 
you know, I've always felt like I was good enough at times to do it, but never really sort of produced enough to, to really knock the door down. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be brutally honest, I, I never thought that opportunity had come. Um, you know, when people say they actually want to play international cricket, you've got to keep, you know, at times you, you sometimes sort of question whether they actually want, want it enough. Um, I've always wanted it, I've always worked hard enough, but to be honest, I never felt that I'd done enough to really, um, you know, warrant that. But yeah, obviously getting that call up was, um, you know, incredibly special. Um, you know, I obviously didn't expect it at 33 at the time, it was sort of thought my time was well and truly gone. But, um, you know, to get that phone call uh, from Chris Silverwood, um, obviously that morning at Cheltenham on the second day when I was trying to get my head around, just batting all day, you know, at some stage having a bat. Um, you know, to then be pulled out of the game and, and told, you know, you've got to go to Cardiff and sit in a hotel room, have a COVID test, and if you don't have COVID, then you could be, you know, you, you're el eligible to go and train and play. Um, you know, it was actually quite daunting because, you know, we, can do, we did all our testing and stuff like that, but you just never really knew. So you sort of hang, you know, sort of hanging on, hoping that, you know, you were, you were negative. But... Yeah, as I said, you know, incredibly special um, three-game series. Obviously, starting at Cardiff, um, you know, making my debut. Um, you know, obviously Ben Stokes coming up to me and, and telling me that I was going to play was was incredible. And, and as I said, then obviously David Milan presenting me my cap. Um, somebody who obviously I've known for a long time um, here at Middlesex and before he moved up to Yorkshire. And somebody who I'd, uh, is a, a good friend of mine. Um, you know, that was uh, a very special moment. Um, but obviously, game two. Home, home of cricket at my home ground. Coming in, you know, walking through that long, through the long room, and sitting in the same spot, um, you know, are, are memories that will always be treasured. And as I said, you know, I sort of, and then obviously onto Edge Baston and and playing there, which is always regarded as the best atmosphere. You know, again, on my birthday, it seems quite ironic, really. You know, but obviously that's what you kind of expect in July. Um, you know, being the summer of cricket. But um, yeah, those three games were were, were very, very special. Um, you know, I always felt like my keeping was a, an incredibly high standard, but probably let myself down again with the bat. But you know, I think that experience um, that I had gave me a bit of a kick up the backside. Um, you know, leading into this year and and really trying to stamp my my mark. Good stuff. Well, on to next year, John. Obviously, you've been awarded a testimony a year. With that, I guess comes a bit of graft. You've had to appoint a committee and a committee chair. You will have lots of events planned in the diary. I'm assuming. Um, I think I'm right in saying you have to nominate a charity uh, who will also benefit from the testimonial year. Um, where are you at with all of that planning? What have we got in store and who's the charity? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, led me quite nicely onto that, Fletch. It's, it's been challenging. Um, you know, it always feels like I've got a nine to five job, <laughs> constantly on the phone and, and email and trying to sort out meetings. Uh, but yeah, look, obviously it's going to be a, a, a special year. Um, obviously, f hopefully there's going to be some some great events. Obviously, one of the things I, you know, I want to do is is do something for the Middlesex members and supporters who've been incredibly, um, you know, generous and supportive of mine throughout the years. And you know, if they've got any ideas or anything that they think that work well, you know, for me, it's it's incredible to listen to them and 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 get as much advice and what they think event might work work well for them. You know, whether that's a quiz night, whether that's a a, a, a testimonial game, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, that's for you know, hopefully. For, uh, I'm, more than happy for them to sort of email me with some ideas. Um, but yeah, obviously try and get as much, um, you know, trying to get as many events in that I can. Um, and hopefully it's going to be fun, but obviously it's going to be uh, challenging throughout the year. Um, and, and obviously the charities that are supported, I've, I've been an ambassador for Lord's Taverns now for 10 years and it's an incredible work that they do with disability cricket with, a, you know, wickets programs and super ones. So and that was obviously a charity that's quite close to me and, and, and I've obviously been involved for a long time, um, actually on their cricket committee as well. Uh, and then obviously Cancer Research was my going to be my second chosen charity. Um, obviously something that's very close to me as well. Um, with a lot of, a lot of family members who've uh, passed away from cancer and, um, and yeah, it's just, um, you know, I think, I think we can all really resonate with that, to be honest. And um, yeah, I look forward to working with both charities and hoping to raise some good money for them as well. Absolutely, Simo. Two amazing causes. Well, look, thank you ever so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking a bit of a stroll down through memory lane there and looking back on some of your highs. All the very best of luck next year in 2023. I'm absolutely certain members would love to get involved and put forward some suggestions rather than 
perhaps inundating you with emails, I'll tell them to email inquiries <laughs> at middlesexccc.com and I'm sure we can forward those on. Um, but Simo, thanks again. Congratulations, richly deserved. And uh, I hope it all goes well. I'm sure it will. Cheers, lads. Thank you very much.